Welcome back to the Brown Bob YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to be installing the Trailtech Vapor. I've had a couple of you reach out to me in regards to installing the Vapor. I'm be putting it on my new GY6 build that I'm doing here, the Nardo Ruck. I know I already wired the bike up in a previous video. If you haven't checked it out, please take a look. The thing that was holding me back was I did not have a bracket for the handlebars that I have on this bike behind me. These are the TRS clip-on bars, the universal clip-on bars. With these, there's no bracket for it. There's nothing that you can do if you wanted to put a Speedo on it. So I drew up a bracket and then I just painted it, but this is it. It's going to pinch in between the clip-on and the mount itself. It has a small angle here, and this is where the vapor is going to mount to. It come, the bracket comes with two bolts as well. I'm selling this bracket. It's not going to be black. I just painted this. I'm selling this bracket in raw on the Ruck Shops page. It's $19.99. You should check it out. If you have these bars, this is going to be perfect for you to run the vapor. So in this video, I'll be installing this as well as installing the Trailtech Vapor. So with the Vapor, I do have a GY6, so it'll be a little bit different than the guys with the 49cc, but I will give you pointers on what you can do for the 49cc as well. So this video will cover both types of uh, scooters. I'm gonna get right into it now by taking off these clip-on bars and sliding the new bracket on. So I'm gonna stop right there. Originally, I thought I had enough room for the clip-ons to come off. I do on the left side, but not on the right side, no matter where I put the pitch of the triple tree. So to make it easier, I'm just gonna take off this main triple tree, or the main bolt here for the stem neck, lift it up, and then I'll be able to drop the clip-ons. I'm not gonna take it all the way off necessarily, but this will just give me enough room so I don't have to take the ignition cover off and keep going further down. So I'll do that next, get this off, slide the new bracket on, and then button everything up. Yeah, yeah. And you don't stop, and you won't stop. Okay, so now that I have the bracket on, and it's pinched in between the clip-on bar and the neck itself. You slide it back up, a little tip, squeeze this tight while you're tightening up these two bolts so it makes a good firm clamp on the bracket. If you start to let go, it'll drag down and then you'll have some play with the bracket. So with that bracket comes two little M4 by eight screws. These are what's gonna go into the back of the bracket into the vapor itself. So we're gonna go put those in. Again, Loctite, because you don't want that falling off and your vapor coming off. You can see there's a cutout here. That's where you're going to slide all the wires through. And once you get them all through, put the bolt in and start to screw it into the back of the Trail Tech by hand. There's one. I already have Loctite on these bolts. Now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this up. Now that that's on there, you have these four plug terminals coming off the back of the vapor. So one of them is a tack wire, the other one's a power, the other one's the speedo, and the other one is the head temp that goes off your spark plug. So we are going to go ahead and get started on wiring those up. So next up you're going to take your power wire, which is this one right here. It has the small little four prong clip and it's got just a red and black wire that have no pigtail at the other end. As you can see it's just split. So this can go in a lot of places. The red needs to go to a 12 volt DC power source. The black needs to get grounded. So some people will put the black to the negative of the battery. And then for the ATR harness with the GY6, the red one can go to any of the black wires on the harness. Those are all 12 volt DC uh, wires. So anywhere on here that you have a 12 volt source, like a black wire, you can put that too. For the 49cc, the two places you can put it to is the OEM headlight speedo um, wire, 
wire, which there's just two wires. It's, uh, I believe it's black and green. Um, so you can put it to those. The green is going to be ground. And then the other place you can tap the power source into is the same place where you put for your NCY CDI off that relay that's on the other side of the bike by the battery there. So what I'm going to do is, on my ATR harness, I knew I was saving this already, so I'm playing around with some resistors right now, so don't mind this, I'll actually unplug them. But with this clip comes a green and black 2-pin, and it's usually labeled OEM Speedo wire. So what I'm going to do is plug it directly into there. I'm going to put a 2-pin plug onto this clip, because I have that pin kit that we sell at the rug shop. So I'm going to make a two pin plug so it plugs right into this. If I ever have to take that off, I don't have to worry about it being soldered in. And I'll run the black and green to that directly since this is a 12 volt source that comes off by the key. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So you can see I ran the black and red to the green and black on the ATR which says the OEM Speedo light. That's now pinned in with that pin kit that they sell at the workshop. With that being said, now if I put my key in the ignition and prime it, there we go. We now have power to the vapor. So now we have our 12 volt DC source. That part's done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to run the temp sensor wire for the coil. So in your vapor, you're going to get a packet like this. I don't know what's up with my autofocus today. There we go. You can see it's going to have a little brass fitting there. That's what your spark plug is going to go in. So this is your head temp sensor. So you're going to take that out of the bag. As you can see, it's very short. So when you get the Trail Tech Vapor from the Ruck Shop, we also include because we know some of you have stretch ruckuses, well even if you didn't have a stretch ruckus, a stock ruckus, this is not enough length to go from the meter itself to the spark plug. So we include a 48 inch extension. So you're going to see a piece like that, I'll say, I believe 48 inch on the package. Now what this is going to allow you to do is, has a reasonable distance to it so that you can actually make use of it. So as you see, there's the male end coming off the temp sensor, female end off the extension. Just plugs like right in like that. For myself, I have the direct ignition coil. So I have to remove that, then take the spark plug out. You take the spark plug, slide it in that hole, tighten it up. This wire is going to be coming out and then you're going to run this up along the gas tank up to the head unit itself where it's going to plug into the female end, because this is the male end here, on the head unit itself, and then you should have head temp. So we're going to go ahead and get that started now. Stop and you won't stop and you don't. So just so you can see, it has like a, a 90 to it. So what you're going to do is take your spark plug and put it through so that the, head, the point of the plug there like the cap and coil is going to go into, the wire goes up along with it and out. So now that that's in, I'm going to screw this back in and I'll be able to run the cable along. Stop. So with that wire, the uh, head temp one, I'm going to have to run that in my loom. So instead of just taking the time to show you guys that, I'm going to take all the parts off on my own, run it up the loom, and then plug it into the switch itself. The next one is going to be the ignition, so basically your RPM wire. So with this one, it is long enough, so you won't need an extension. Typically, where this goes is on your coil. So you run this little small connector wire all the way down. You see you have this red wire after the black sleeve right here. 
And what you're going to typically do with your normal coil is, let me see if I have one. Okay, so for your standard coil, like this here, this one has a rubber sleeve on it, but your, your ruckus one will not. So if you do have a GY6, you're just going to have to remove this sleeve. If it's a ruckus, you're good to go, like a standard 49cc or even the NCY ones. So what you're going to do is take this and wrap it around the coil five times. So what you're going to want to make sure you do is make sure it's evenly length with each wrap, leaving the same space in between the coils. So you can see like that, like I started here with the, the first couple. You're going to want to make sure it's like that. Keep it in place. Go over it with some black electrical tape, or if you have heat shrink, you can go over it with that. This way, make sure that stays in place like that, so that this is going to read your RPMs. I have seen people do it off the CDI. Um, I'm not sure of the success with that. Originally, it just made the wrap around the coil. For this one, I am going to try to tap it off the GY6 CDI and see how that does. Because I have the direct ignition coil, there's no more coil wire like that since it's a coil pack system. So with this one, I'm going to do this on my own, but at least I could show you on a spare coil how you're supposed to wrap around. And the same thing, you're going to run this from the back of the bike up. Usually I try to follow the brake cables or the throttle cable. It's the easiest path going to the front of the battery box, and then you just plug it right up and in. The last source for the Trailtech Vapor Kit is the Speedo cable. So we'll get to that now. So for the Speedo cable, you're going to get this cable right here with the sensor on it, you're going to get the vapor instructions, which I believe they just started doing on their website now, so it's all like a PDF file, so it won't be the paper anymore, but I will go over how to program this the easiest way that I found. You're also going to get a bag with a bunch of zip ties and some bolts. So what these are going to do is these are going to go into your rotor for disc brake, and then this is going to go to your fork and with this magnetic system every time the magnet passes the speedo cable is where it's going to read so it reads the revolutions on the wheel so what we'll do first is i'm going to plug in the cable just to show you because again i'm going to install this a little bit differently on mine but at least i can go over the basics with everybody so we'll get the cable started and i'll bring you back to the front of the bike here so now you have the cable unwrapped it's because it's come pre-curled, it just wants to go back to that position. Over time, it will tend to go straight like you want it to, because right now it's going to be a pain when installing because of this. Also, if you have a lowered bike like mine, like lowered for front forks and uh, lowered handlebars, this is a lot of cable. So the biggest thing is going to be hiding the excess cable. You almost have to wrap it up like that inside the front of the battery box. It's it's a lot of cable. And the only reason why I say that, typically, you could just cut this and make your own pin. But the, I try to keep the regular vapor clips because they're very small and I don't have anything like that. So what you're gonna do is run the sensor down the battery box, like so. I try to keep it in the, the factory brake cable holder brackets, those little round brackets that come to keep your cables all intact. So I'm going to have the sensor through. I don't know if you can see there's another, another bracket right down here. I'm going to run that through there. And bring the cable wire down. Now you can see, I'm already where I want to be with the, the sensor. I'm going to put it right here. So that leaves all of this excess. And the Speedo, I will plug in now. As you can see, I have all this to hide inside the box which can be a pain. So in the meantime, <laughs> it's 
so much cable. What I like to do is, and that's why they come up with these zip ties here to help you eat up the slack and then also they want you to zip tie it to the fork here. Now my recommendation is get yourself some double sided tape, some 3M double sided tape. They do have a hole right there to use a self tapper. Well it's not even a self tapper but they give you this screw right here and they want you to drill into the fork with it. Now I'm not going to do that. I've always used the 3M tape. You're going to prep the area that you're using with alcohol. And then likewise with the sensor here, put that on. Now the sensor is going to read one way. So you want to make sure that when you do bolt it on, that it's reading correct. So what you can always do is once you mount the sensor on, you can run a magnet. Just put one of the magnets in there temporarily. You're going to jack up the front of the bike here so you can spin the wheel freely. And this will allow you to make sure that it's reading the mile per hour. So I'm going to get the bike prepped up now, get the front end lifted up, and we'll get started on the next bike. With this kit comes a bolt that has a magnet. That has a magnet at the head of it there. This is probably what I'm going to use and run it through one of the roller holes with a nut on the other side of it. So that being said, you want the sensor here to be able to catch that. So with that I'm going to take this magnet, I'll probably put it somewhere like right here in the hub so it's pretty close to when it passes the sensor itself. You want the distance to be about a half inch apart. So the nice part about these RGS Adelin forks is they have this gap right here that's all open. It's a nice flat surface that you can use the double sided tape, put it against there, run the sensor there, and then run the magnet in the rotor right here. Now it has room for a nut in the back, so I'll just squeeze that close with a nut and then use some Loctite and really seal it in place there. And as for the sensor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 3M tape, place it right here, and then with this portion, I'm going to get some heat shrink and go over this with heat shrink, make it all black so you don't see the connector, and then run this up, and it's going to run parallel to when I eventually run my front brake cable up here for the disc brake setup and just run up with that into the box. And you don't stop, and you won't stop. Okay, to give you a closer look, I used one of the supplied zip ties, held the cable up top here, came down. I will have to get some heat shrink. I ran out of the size I need for that. Ran down, used that 3M tape that I have the double-sided, gave it plenty of clearance. Place that there. They have the hex head bolt that has the magnet built into it. I put that through and on the opposing side, see if I can see through the wheel. Barely can, but I have a um, nylock nut on the opposing side of this. So this is tight, it's not going anywhere. I gave the wheel a spin. And with spinning it and the ignition on, I was able to trip the Speedo. Now, if you're getting the Trailtech Vapor brand new, there's a battery that's in it, like a watch battery. The minute you start spinning that, it's going to turn on the gauge automatically. So don't be alarmed by that because it does run off the battery backup. My battery had died, so mine's strictly working right now off of 12 volt ignition. So that being said, I'm going to have the wire go up like so, probably to the bracket, and then cut in and go into the battery box where I will have to tuck away the rest of it. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to program the Speedo. So you're going to go to the Speedo from Trail Tech. You're going to measure the top of your tire here. So from the very top to the ground. Mine at this tire pressure right now is 17. So I'm going to take 17. I'm going to multiply it by 
four, because that's how you convert it to millimeters. So you're going to get a number, 431. Then you're going to multiply that by 3.14 equals 1355. So I'll do it again. My wheel is 17 inches. I'm going to times that by 25.4 equals 431. So that's converting it to millimeters. So that's 431 millimeters. And then I'm going to multiply that by 3.14. I got 1355. So that 1355 is what you're going to enter in on your speedo, and that's going to be the most accurate setting for your speed. In order to do that, you hold all three down. And you're going to go over, it says units, mine's mile per hour, so that's correct. So here's the number for the speed. So mine was. 1355. Oh. Backed out. Good. So it's one. One, three. Five. Five. I've got a 12 hour clock. So the pulse per revolutions is what's going to read off your tack. I believe for the ruckus it is two pulse per revolutions. So that's set. I got the temperature, it's set in Fahrenheit already. So you can set your high temp warning. I'll go over that later, your danger temp warning. And shift, we don't have to worry about shifting. So there you go. Right now it's showing my outside temp, 90 degrees in the garage right now, RPM, the speedo, and then the clock. So I hope you like this install video for the Trailtech Vapor. If you do have any questions, you can comment below. I'll see if I can help you out with it. The rest of this is just running the wires for me and hiding the wires, which I like to take my time on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. If you want to see how it turns out, take a look at the next video I'm going to be dropping because I will go over that in the beginning to kind of show you how I hit everything and where I ran everything. So again, appreciate all the support on the channel. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will put the product description for the bracket and the vapor below.